Well, he is a rotifer. And he's just kind of stretching out here. Kind of like a clock. Right here at 11 o'clock. Well, he's taking off now. What do you see, Rotifer? What do you see, Grasshopper? I think this is a Daphnia here. A water flea. Hands up, you're under arrest, Daphnia. Uh, these are kind of interesting. Very quick in the water, too. Uh, they can be a pest sometimes. Oh, here's a, a pretty moon here. Here we are, a beautiful moon here. This is a type of diatom, but uh, yellow. And I don't see yellow very often. I see green ones. I see different color ones, but not yellow that often. So that reminds me of an eighth of a moon when you look up in the sky. And so this is just really pretty right here. So we'll... We're looking at this at 100 power, so we'll focus in. I did a video on one of these a while back. See those straight lines going across there like a banana. Uh, silica trying to get in the picture here. So let's look at it at uh, 250 power. We're at 100 power, so 250. And look how bright she is. Wow. And actually, it's right in front of that. I think that's a pebble in the back, that crystal looking. So it's right in front of it, which that's good. And this is algae right here that's uh, I'm covering part of it. That's algae. And we should be able to see some uh, living organisms inside of this. We're kind of scanning right here. Through it, scanning. Let's hold right there for a second. And I see some movement there. Let's see. Enlarge that. We'll kind of scan. And you may see a little movement there. And that's on the inside. Dead center screen is, you can see movement there. And that's, of course, on the inside. And let me adjust my aperture. Maybe we can, if it helps or no. Let me adjust my condenser. Kind of a different color there. Now, with dark field is great, and you see the beauty of a lot of things you would never see with the white field light. And uh, you see that little movement there. Adjusting my condenser, and okay, we have something that looks like a silicate here. And it's got the shape of a frontana, but I don't think that's what it is. These two see through. Enlarge him a little bit. So we can see through him. And he's underneath some algae right here. And. Notice this green stalk that he's against right here. It looks like stalk. This is algae right here. And I want you to notice the inside this right here. Enlarge that. See that spiral? This is called spirogyra. Spirogyra. Because it makes this pretty spiral. And let me touch the aperture a little bit. Let's see how that looks. It makes a spiral, kind of like a candy cane spiral. And spirogyra, that's what that is.
And we come back from that. This is one of my favorite creatures of the microcosmos here. And look how long he is. Green. And they're fairly common. And this is from pond water. Look at the head here. This is called the hydra. And I think he has six tentacles on him. And the hydra comes from Greek mythology of a six-headed serpentine creature. If you cut off that creature's head, it would uh, regrow two heads instead of one, according to some mythologies. And so uh, it had regenerative power. And that's probably why they call this the hydra, because it has amazing ability to regenerate. Uh, you can cut this hydra into 20 pieces, and each piece by itself will grow into a full-size hydra. And scientists have studied the hydra, and they cannot tell how old hydra, the hydra is. It does not show any aging or anything. Some have even called it immortal. But the fact is that they can die if they're ingested by another uh, creature or animal. Uh, they will die. And even a drop of alcohol will kill the hydra. But uh, it's often been studied and people have been amazed by its regenerative powers. And it has the amazing ability to shrink down. You see how long it was in the beginning of this uh, clip here. And if it gets scared or something, it just shrinks down to hardly nothing. But look, now notice the tentacles here are very long. And um, you'll see in a moment that uh, what whatever reason he shrinks down. But the tentacles will shrink and his whole body will shrink down. Reminds me of what that movie was, what the Fantastic Four, the the, the uh, stretchable man who could stretch out his arms and legs and things like that. And so the Hydra has this ability too, just to stretch out like that and to uh, contract. So these are amazing uh, when you think about it, that uh, something like this, and I forgot how long these can live. But uh, that's one thing about the microcosmos is that you see all kinds of creatures here and then you can study them and uh, see what kind of powers they have. Scientists believe that hydras can live almost forever. Some even predict over 1,400 years they do not age uh, that they know of. They can be destroyed by other creatures as mentioned, but... Uh, imagine that, that you could uh, live forever, perpetual. Their body regenerates all the time. Uh, it's a perpetual regeneration of their body. So that's just another amazing thing. And, and they can get over 10 uh, millimeters long, which is pretty long in this micro world. Uh, Now, this little creature here is our friend, the Rhodopher, the Rhodopher. And it's a very interesting multi cell creature here. probably has maybe a thousand cells in some of these Rhodophers. And uh, they're very interesting, especially the way that uh, they consume uh, algae here and other things. They open their mouth, you see, it was kind of pointed now, it's open, and uh, it can be pretty quick. But his mouth is open, and uh, it's got like two spinning wheels on the front of the mouth, which are these uh, cilia hairs that spin around, or it looks like they're spinning. But anyway, it's kind of like a vacuum cleaner. These, these hairs spin, and uh, it creates a vortex. You see right here, at about 9 o'clock position, uh, the mouth is open, and there's these little hairs that are hard to see, but they are spinning in a... In a I don't know, clock or clockwise or counterclockwise a direction. And as they spin, uh, they create a vortex, kind of like water going down a, into a, a bathtub. And it sucks in things. You can see small particles of food right here being, uh, for at least for them, uh, being circulated in a circle there. 
and so like a vacuum cleaner they suck in this stuff now what he's attached to his tail can attach to things too so his tail is attached to uh, this algae and if you look inside his body here you'll see that's algae inside his body that particular color so these are pretty amazing they are generally most uh, rotifers are female and generally asexual and it said that the male rotifers do not uh, eat so in the micro world, you find all kinds of things. Now, they can live three or four days to a month of uh, rotifer, so they're, they're not like our friend the hydra. But they are always, to me, interesting. You'll find some rotifers that are a lot larger than this one. I think this one is uh, about 200, maybe 250 power. And right here, I pulled my dark field filter out just a little bit and the light is hitting this rotifer differently and so you can see some parts of the rotifer better and perhaps you can see the spinning celery hairs uh, uh, spinning on him maybe and so it just gives a different light pattern uh, right now you see a pulsation right below the uh, the head there uh, he just contracted that pulsation is probably a contracting vacuole, which pumps water out of his body. Water is absorbed into the body a lot of, of these. Uh, okay, here's one of these guys here that, you see his legs here. There's a lot of little hairs right there. And inside him, it looks like little claws here. Generally, crustaceans have this thing about them. He reaches out. There you go. That's normally the way you see these guys. They're just rambunctious. You know, spinning like that, they can really tear up a lot of algae, and so they can get it a lot better. And look at that arm right there. See that? See the arm grabbing. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, I'm still amazed with this right here because uh, this is intricately made right here. This uh, it's like a algae or something like that, but. Uh, I haven't seen it quite like this. I'm looking at it looks like uh little hairs or something coming off of it what I'm seeing here. But look at that. Yeah, we're trying to enlarge that a little bit. Well let's go to two hundred and fifty power. I wanna see what we can see with that. Okay, this is 250 power. And, you know, there's a pattern. It, it's kind of large, then it goes to small, and then it's large again. Then it goes to small. Right here we have two beautiful diatoms, and... This is a thousand power here, and you can see these organelles moving inside the diatom around the edges, and uh, they're floating in the cytoplasm. Diatoms are responsible for uh, about 20% of the oxygen on Earth, so about every fifth breath you take comes from a diatom. So they're very important. They come in all sizes, shapes, and colors, too, but they are quite amazing. Now this is a flatworm. It reminds me of Casper the Friendly Ghost with two holes cut in the eyes here of a sheet. And flatworms are very interesting because they have a great ability to regenerate, a little bit like the hydra. 
And if you cut this flatworm into a hundred pieces, guess what? He'll grow into a hundred flatworms, even regenerate his brain. Now inside him, you'll see what well, looks like maybe a diatom, that green right there, and the rest may be algae and other things that he has consumed. But look at the food in him. It just rotates around in a circle. Flatworms are interesting uh, creatures, though, and so it's pretty amazing, though, that they have this regenerative uh, ability. Even their brains regenerate uh, if you cut them in 100 pieces. Scientists study that to try to help people with strokes and other things, too. So, this is, I think this is a type of larva. It could be just a worm, but... Uh, Interesting, isn't he? Got two eyes there, they're blind. And look at this body. He's pretty slow. We can see inside him, you can see the movement inside his body here. Some movement there. And uh, focus on that. It reminds me of a type of larva. That's what it reminds me of. And right here, these are these little arms. You see those little arms right there? Uh, these have like two little arms. I call them like T-Rex arms. And you see how he pushes himself through the algae. Looks like he could be very menacing, doesn't he? I have to look him up to see. He he could be something like a mosquito larva. Who knows? It's so. Oh, he just swallowed something. He said, "Go down his throat." what it looked like anyway. Well, this is very interesting. And this is a 100 power too, so it's not really strong magnification. And he's walking on the slide cover. That was amazing how the organisms like this survive. These legs here, they can kind of attach themselves, whatever. 